Hi, I'm Mitch Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at D2S with Leo Pang, who's going to talk today about wafer plane analysis. Leo, what's the problem we're facing? Why do, why do we need wafer plane analysis? Oh, well, uh, this happens uh, uh, in the uh, latest uh, technology node uh, when the, uh, the very aggressive uh, resolution enhancement technology like uh, uh, very aggressive OPC or LT uh, are used. Uh, so the patterns on the mask becomes uh, uh, very complicated, uh, uh, the complex patterns, collinear patterns. Uh, then this brings uh, challenges to both uh, 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 CD metrology and also mask inspection. And is this getting worse at each new node? Yeah, it's getting worse because the, the uh, more aggressive uh, OPC and uh, even the IoT uh, will be used uh, in those technology nodes. So the pattern is getting uh, more complex than before. And we're talking what, 10 nanometers, 7 nanometers, or way further up? Yeah, we're talking about uh, uh, starting like a 14 nanometer, 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer. Uh, actually, for each new technology node, the, the uh, challenges are getting higher. So, Leo, why don't you draw some of this out for us? All right. So, first, uh, uh, let me uh, let me explain uh, the uh, mask making process. Uh, so, first the step, uh, you have to write a mask uh, with a mask writer. Uh, followed by uh, mask CD metrology, uh, which is uh, usually done by uh, CD uh, CD scan. Uh, so when you measure the CD, once the CD is cracked, uh, you do the uh, mask inspection. Uh, to detect the defect and also to figure out you know, which defect you need to uh, repair. Uh, then you do the mask repair. And after you do the mask repair, you use uh, uh, the aim screw to verify uh, the repair result. Um, so uh, you know, CD metrology, uh, usually this is done by the CDSM. And in the old days, uh, you just have to add some CD bars. Uh, you measure those uh, CD uh, bars. But uh, uh, recently, uh, customers uh, like the Wafer 5, first they ask uh, more CD measurement. Uh, secondly, they ask to measure on the actual uh, pattern instead of the CD bars. Uh, but for the latest technology node, uh, the challenge is uh, since the, the uh, resolution enhancement technologies are used, especially the very aggressive OPC and even IoT, uh, then the patterns become uh, more complex. So CD SIM had been talked about running out of steam for quite a while. Is this a way of extending some of that? Uh, yeah, this is kind of like a, to extend it, uh, uh, the CD SIM not only doing a measurement uh, on the mask level, but also doing it on more like on the wafer level, which is uh, you know, what the customer really cared. Uh, so uh, for the patterns, uh, once you use a very aggressive OPC, for example, uh, the line space is not the line space anymore, and the contact used to be square, but now the contact, uh, you would see something like uh, this kind of shape plus uh, some uh, uh, these features. Uh, all those uh, mass patterns, uh, they have a small segment, uh, and uh, because of that, uh, because of the resolution of the resist on the mass pattern uh, uh, itself, uh, you see kind of like a curvilinear patterns. So those patterns are complex, and they are kind of like collinear. So it's very hard to define you know, what's the CD, and also uh, it's hard to measure it. Uh, and the, the way to solve this challenge is actually instead of doing the measurement on the mask, you can actually do the measurement on wafer. Uh, because on the wafer level, uh, this kind of like complex pattern, they just want to uh, print uh, as a simple contact, which is uh, like a circle shape. So this is one of the problems with 
double patterning, triple patterning too, right? It's not showing up very curly. Right. This actually uh, happens uh, on double patterning, triple patterning uh, as well, because uh, when you do the double patterning, triple patterning, some of the patterns uh, it becomes simple. It's just like a uh, line, sp uh, line space patterns, right? But uh, uh, then you also have to uh, cut those patterns. So on the cutting layer and also on the contact wear layer, you are going to see uh, this kind of like a two-dimensional, very complex uh, mass patterns. You're taking advantage of what's already there. Are there other options out there as well for different ways of doing this? Uh, yeah, there are basically uh, two options, right? Uh, uh, one way is uh, you can actually use some uh, uh, hardware, like an optical system, more like a microscope, to emulate the scanner so that uh, you uh, measure the error image using that system. Uh, the uh, challenge or the, the problem of that approach is uh, first uh, you need a, you need to buy a new equipment. Secondly, uh, those kind of uh, optical based uh, system they don't have the same uh, repeatability or the high accuracy as the scanner. Uh, so your uh, result won't be that uh, uh, repeatable. Uh, then the second option is uh, you try to leverage the existing uh, CD cell, right? So uh, the way you do it is uh, you take the CD cell image, uh, you extract the, the mask contour, then you can throw that into a lethal simulation to simulate uh, the error image. Then you do the measurement on the simulated error image. Uh, the advantage of uh, this approach is uh, firstly, uh, CD cell is very high, has a very high accuracy and now has a very high repeatability. Uh, uh, then uh, you are going to uh, also you're going to leverage this uh, existing equipment that you already have in the mass shop. There was some talk that CD Sam would run out of steam at 20 nanometers. Is it how far do you see it going from here? Well, if you look at the, the CD Sam uh, uh, accuracy itself, it's actually really really high, right? We are talking about this uh, less than half nanometer accuracy, and uh, also with the same kind of level of repeatability. So. Uh, CD Sam want to uh, run out of the uh, uh, seam uh, for like a 10 nanometer or 7 nanometer. Uh, the challenge is uh, how do you deal with this kind of like a two dimensional complex pattern? How do you do the seam uh, maturity? But this is uh, this kind of like a measuring it on the wafer level will actually solve that challenge. We've heard the upside approach here. What's the downside of this? Uh, yeah, the downside I would say. Uh, if you just uh, use the typical uh, uh, lethal simulation based on CPU, uh, running a, a simulation for such a large uh, image, we are talking about like a couple thousand pixels by couple thousand pixels, uh, that would be slow. It will, you have to wait like a, uh, you know half minutes or minutes to get the result. Uh, the way to solve that challenge is uh, you can actually use a TPU acceleration. If you develop a, a TPU accelerated lethal simulation, then uh, you can get the uh, result in a second. Uh, so that actually solved the, uh, the challenge of this approach. Does this actually improve the throughput in the uh, foundry and the, the, the mass shop, or is it still, we're starting to deal with so many different things that we're starting to slow down everywhere? Well, this actually helps the, uh, the, uh, the wafer fab, uh, because uh, uh, you can actually, uh, the uh, CD sum is uh, really fast. Right, you can uh, get like a thousand of the measurement. Uh, then you run the simulation. You kind of like get this uh, global CD map, and you can forward this uh, to the scanner. And the scanner can use this uh, global CD map to do certain corrections, so that you can get your wafer correct uh, at the first time. So at seven nanometers, uh, is this still going to be the same type of um, process that you were dealing with back at twenty nanometers? or are we dealing with a whole new level of complexity that you didn't see before? Oh, well, uh, the 7 nanometer definitely is much more challenged than 20 nanometer. Uh, you see, uh, even for those cutting layers, you have to split that into like a two or even three layers, right? So uh, the, uh, at the 7 nanometer, starting from like a 10 nanometer, especially at 7 nanometer, you do see uh, those are very aggressive uh, uh, resolution enhancement technology like uh, inverse lithography technology will be used and you are going to see more, more like this kind of like two-dimensional two complex patterns. So it's getting harder everywhere? 
Yeah, exactly. So any other applications for this technology? Yeah, actually uh, this technology can uh, not only be used for CD metrology, but also is very useful for mask inspection. Because the, uh, for mask inspection, the challenge is uh, it's the same thing. You know, the patterns are getting smaller, they are getting two-dimensional. So uh, the images you get uh, from mask inspection tool is really fuzzy. It's uh, kind of like hard to uh, uh, disposition those kind of defects uh, just uh, by looking at the image, uh, the optical image from the mask inspection tool. Uh, the way to solve that uh, problem, you can actually leverage this. You can actually uh, take images using CDSAM for all of those defects. Uh, then firstly, you are going to see the defect uh, much clearer than the optical image that you got from the mask inspection tool. Uh, secondly, uh, you, you can actually run the lethal simulation to determine uh, the printability of the defect. Because now on those uh, complex patterns, uh, the impact of the same size the defect, depending where the defect is located, uh, either on the cis feature or on the main feature, uh, their impact are very different. So you cannot just uh, look at on the mask level uh, of the image to determine the, the defect, whether you need to repair. You need to run the lethal simulation, check their printability. Uh, then you see, okay, whether this defect needs to be repaired or not. And it's not that you need more CD SIM machines to improve the throughput, right? It's that you need more machines to process the data that comes out of the CD SIM. Correct. The CD sum itself actually is uh, quite fast, right? So you need a, a very fast uh, uh, simulation engine so that uh, you can actually process those images in you know, real time uh, so that you can use them. Well, Yo Pang, this is a very complex subject. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you.